Zerglings are in fact going to back off, uh, open up that that third factor. Let's see if it, yeah, missed the three additional gateways going down. Still no air, and I honestly I feel like you should have a, a Stargate no matter what, really. Uh, Photon Cannon going also up uh, on the backfield just in case some lurkers manage to sneak through in that uh, that direction also to avoid drops, I guess. Um, Zelt Speed now being upgraded. Still no Psy Storm that I see. Yeah, Dark Templar being produced out in the field uh, additionally. Surprisingly, usually I feel like Dark Templar aren't going to be very effective for you. They'll, they'll give you some map control, but they're not going to be very effective for you unless uh, you have some, some Corsairs alongside. Don't, I don't see the speed upgrade on the opposite end, though, for Day 9, and it looks like his Overlords still aren't speed upgraded, though. So those Dark Templars still would be somewhat effective, but I still don't think as effective as they could be with even a single Corsair out uh, kind of in combination. Additional hatcheries being put down, it looks like the at the 6 o'clock position, uh, these Zerglings are going to get absolutely murdered here, though, uh, with these Zelts pushing forward. Weapons 1 should be done momentarily. Looks like it will be done momentarily, and Zelts continuing to push down. Oh, sorry, look at the blood. Uh, pushing out. Looks like he's actually just going to pull back, take his third base, uh, play more of an economic game. And uh, let's check the supply count. So 76 uh, versus 73. Starting to... Uh, he's not behind in supply count. Well, he's technically behind. You want to be about what, 20, 30 supply ahead. 20, 25, actually, ahead. Protoss versus Zerg, just because Zerg units tend to be have a little bit more impact on uh, lurkers and, and mutalisks specifically, um, be more effective units. Additional creep colonies going down, the observer being chased off a little bit there, uh, and it uh, looks like a lot of mutalisks being gathered up to the south, and I'm kind of curious, I think Danon realizing that he's not faced any Corsairs at this stage, he's going to take control of the air, simply because uh, it looks like it's being afforded him. Some Zerglings uh, in the backfield are trying to push up on that third base, but just too many units in position to really stop that. And as you can see, in this unit composition, there isn't anything to deal with the mutalisks. There is a high Templar in the background, weapons 2 being upgraded now. Uh, doesn't look like the Mirth to, or Archon quite yet. Size Storm just finishing. A couple cannons in the backfield. I don't know if it's enough cannons to really deal with a large scale Mutalisk attack, and it looks like the Mutalisks are starting. That's a lot of Mutalisks. That's a full control group of Mutalisks. I think the Observer did see it, though, uh, but it's still not going to be enough to save these Dragoons. These Dragoons are going to have to back off. Two cannons going up in the background. The question is, is will they be able to buy enough time to save this third base? Oh, High Templar getting picked off before it could even cast Size Storm. Usually Mutalisks will be able to dodge out of it. This is an excellent adjustment there by Day, though, uh, getting a little bit wary there in the Size Storm, but realizing that he has. that he essentially owns the air at this stage uh, that he can go up and push it and this is what I was curious what he didn't do uh, game one and it looks like on this main look at all this room he's going to have to harass here um, yeah just take the ramp kill those dragoons and just continue to pump mutalisks at this stage honestly I think that's what all he needs to do to essentially win this game um, and again yeah as you can see he's got free reign here to stop the gas there's Deus just doesn't really have position to deal with it. He's got five Dragoons upside, but they're going to have to uh, push through a lot of their own base uh, to really stop a lot of this, and a lot, and just bleeding drones in the meantime. Thai Templar getting picked off. Uh, in the meantime, drones getting picked off as they're trying to transfer. Uh, now finally an Archon alongside to help at least herd these Mulesks aside, but still open free reign uh, on the back of Deuce's base. And ouch. Uh... Ow, 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 ow. Just all sorts of probe kills happening here, and now we're seeing some good old Mutalist Micro just raking the backside. Uh, still keeping up, it looks like it's a little supply cap there, but now the supply advantage is firmly in Day 9's favor. Um, looks like a couple of Mutalists getting killed there, but yeah, he's he's just got the the economic advantage in, in basically just in spades. Uh, four bases under his control, as you can see, he's hoarding, uh, he's <laughs> gathering a horde of his troops. Got a lot of Mulesks up in the background. I think he's going to be on, actually already teching to Hive, interestingly enough. Maybe thinking about going big air here, uh, like he did in game one. He's already got the Queen's Nest down. Looks like he's got a Lurker Link combination going on once again. Uh, the one advantage, though, is Weapons 2 will be up uh, momentarily, and Lurker's continuing to pound this probe line. Uh, Archon looks like it pushed up, losing an Overlord. That's going to put Day... Actually, put him in red for about half a second here. Uh, still able to hammer that secondary. Let's see if he pushes up and actually goes after some of these gateways and things. Uh, tries to catch some Archons that are coming out, or I'm sorry, some High Templar coming out in the field. Looks like he's going to go up and once again try to halt the gas here. Um, using a little bit of micro, and the, once again the Dragoon's trying to come back around. I'll say, I think Day might be able to engage that Dragoon force and take it off if he engaged it uh, one at a time. Doesn't look like he needs to, though. Really no reason to. Might as well just keep those Mulesks up in the air. Uh, he, he has map control if he wants it. Single Mulesks just kind of wandering out here at the 9 o'clock, just chilling. What's up, guys? Uh, just gathering up some these Zealots, really feeling worthless here. Really impotent, I'm sure. It's like, I can't attack a Mulesk. If I could slice the air, I could do something, but I can't. Uh, Observer actually finally <laughs> I, I, I've got to assume this Observer coming in is just now seeing this base uh, and just in time to die. Oh, that poor Observer. 
<laughs> it sucks. Things not really going well for Deuce. Um, some probes being transferred. He's eh, doing decent recovery, but he's just economically just way too far behind at this stage of things. Sorry for that misclick there. Day 9, really just pumping up the troops at this stage, getting a Nidus Canal up, Greater Spire. Uh, I'm kind of curious where he wants to Nidus Canal too. Um, still some mules coming around backside. It looks like running into that Archon, so being sent home here. Uh, mules, <laughs> there's that mules now waking up uh, to the glory that is his birthright. Uh, more Nidus, it looks like here's the adjoining part of the Nidus Canal. Uh, Ultra's Cavern also going up. And kind of a skeleton crew force here on the front door for Deuce. He's got some Zealots, he's got some Dragoons, but most of them are, are just being pinned back to, to help deal with the Mutals. The big advantage he has, though, is that weapons, too, whereas I think still care up a zero uh, at this stage of things. I don't know that he can really capitalize on that, though, because of this Mutalisk force that is out in the field. Um, and it's just going to get economically run dry. Running into a supply cap right there. I think he's got to do one big push, and it looks like he's going to do it right now, so having a pretty good game sense, knowing he's in a bit of trouble here. And there's the sacrificial overlord to actually see this coming, though. So I think day, line, day 9 is going to be able to deal with this, uh, and as soon as this attack force is taken out, uh, my guess is, is day 9 will be able to just uh, end it from there, and we'll see if these the observers got to push up this spot. The, uh, the, uh, the Wow. Ultralisks even alongside. Looks like Weapons 1 and uh, Armor 1 came in, so a little bit of bad timing there. That Ultralisk is going to get owned. Ouch. Uh, that Ultralisk should probably get owned too. We'll see if Day 9 can actually defend his front door. He's got a lot of those Sun Colonies alongside, but honestly his troops uh, aren't at the location I was. I would hope they would be in. Now it looks like he's going to push up and gauge uh, now right on the Sunken Line. Uh, Archon doing a pretty good job of shredding those Zerglings, and now the huge attack force coming from behind. Beautiful Psy Storms, though. Oh my goodness. Absolute devastation. Oh, look at the blood. Uh, beautiful, beautiful Psy Storms from Deuce, though. Uh, on the Basically, the groupings that were bunched up behind him. Um, so even though... Uh, and it looks like he br actually bro broke into the secondary. Uh, I still think Day is going to be able to flood in with these Lurkers here and with these Ultralisks that have been produced at this stage uh, to probably clean this attack up. But at least he's inflicting damage. But in the meantime, yeah, Guardians uh, attacking backside. And uh, there, Deuce is going to have to GG. But pretty good fight there at the end. Uh, showed he, that he does have claws. So, But losing 2-0 to Day 9. Pretty good game, I thought. Uh, pretty good fight uh, overall. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, thanks for listening.